Hello, and welcome to Better Than Art School. This is another color theory mini lecture, and this one is called Color is Relative. And what do I mean? What does that mean, color is relative? Because you hear people say, oh, everything is relative. Now, that's, I don't even know what that means. I mean, it's an absolute statement about everything being relative. And how does anybody even know that? How would you know about everything to begin with? So that to me is a silly statement. I don't know what it means. But color being relative is actually demonstrably so. And what I mean by this is that I mean you can change a color with its context and you can make colors appear to be totally different. You can uh, wear out the cones in somebody's eyes and make them think a black and white color is a color picture. All these are examples of color relativity. Color is often called the most relative part of art or the most relative element in art. And I don't know how something's more relative, but color is very uh, provably relative in that sense, that it, that it changes based on its relationship to other things. Okay, so this is Rene Magritte and the caption up top. In French, it says, this is not an apple. Okay. Well, that's obvious. I mean, it's a painting. It's not an apple. So that's one way in which you could understand it. But what he's really getting at, and the Surrealists were really interested in studying optics, just like the post-impressionists, and they were thinking about what is representation? What, how, like what's, what's happening as we move through the world and our consciousness, is that the same thing that's out in the world? Are we just seeing facts? And that's kind of gets to this whole kind of philosophical idea of what is the nature of representation. Here, not meaning just art. Here, meaning in a bigger way, like how are, how do our eyes and brain represent the world to us? Okay. So the sort of non-theory theory that maybe people have if they don't think about it, maybe the default position is just naive realism. What we perceive is an exact copy of the external world. The exact opposite of that is subjective idealism. You might think of it more like a postmodern take on the world. What we perceive is entirely a product of our minds. And when you actually look at evidence for what's really going on, it's really neither of these. You could say it's something in between, but it's actually not even really something in between either, but it's, it's neither of these extremes. Uh, what we see, there's something happening in the world but our eyes and brain encode it in such a way that gives us our conscious experience. And so it's greatly shaped by our minds, but there is something there in the world that is getting referred to, even if it's just our, our eyes and brain are thinking of it as an icon for something else, even if it's that uh, distant of a relationship. Uh, there's still something there in the world that's causing the percept to begin with. So if we talk about color, so this is Isaac Newton who made optics into a science. He did things like stick needles in his eyes to see the burst of color that happens. Uh, he, you know, of course, famously took a prism and broke up white light into different wavelengths. And um, so here he is saying, the rays, to speak properly, are not colored. And then there is nothing else than a certain power and disposition to stir up the sensation, sensation of this or that color. Now, here's what he's saying here. He's saying that a red wavelength, what we would call red, it's a long wavelength. So it's just a photon os oscillating uh, with more space up and down, right? That's, that's what's happening. It's just an electromagnetic phenomenon. And uh, we can put it into numeric tones with our instruments. Um, but what's actually happening is that there's nothing red about it. A long wavelength doesn't look any different from a short wavelength, so red doesn't look any different than violet, but we, our, brain, our eyes and brain encode that electromagnetic wavelength into red. So red is a color code that we use. And it's just another example, and I think I've said this before, but we're kind of like machines for converting quantities into qualities. We stick our hand into two hydrogen and one oxygen atom, and we feel wetness, right? So it's something that's, with when we study it scientifically, it's just 
you know, numbers. And when we feel it, it's just a pure feeling. Okay, so this is Joseph Albers, a color theorist and artist. And here, these first two examples, uh, he's taking one color and making it look like two different colors. In the examples after that, he's going to take two different colors and make them look like the same color. So in this example, that middle strip is really just one color. It's just one color paper strip, and but by what it's surrounded by, it looks totally different, or at least pretty different. The, the ochre orange strip on the right side appears darker and less saturated, and then on the left side, surrounded by the blues, it looks lighter in value and more saturated. This this look at the uh, rectangle in the middle here that's kind of tipped down to the right a little bit that is exact same color on both sides but what's happening here is that on the right side it actually looks like it's the same color that's in the background on the left side and actually it's just one color across it's just one strip of paper I mean, not strip but one rectangle of paper going the whole way so these are great examples of making one color look like two colors now here's taking two different colors and making it look like the same color. Just look at the top. The color surrounded by yellow, the color surrounded by blue. They, you would just guess that was one color, but actually it's they're different. And the, the one surrounded by blue is actually darker, but they look very much the same. There's another example. So yeah, you'd probably just say, yeah, it's just the same color surrounded by two different colors. But no, it's actually two different colors that look to be the same color. I've shown a similar example to this before, but stare at this black circle in the middle. Um, this is from a psychology lecture that I saw. And basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna stare at that black center circle and when I switch slides, keep staring in that same spot. Don't look all around, and look at different places. And what's gonna happen here when I switch is that I keep staring in the middle and it looks like a colored picture, right? And quickly the color kind of fades out and you realize, oh, it's just a black and white picture. Well, how in the world did that happen? Well, this is just fatiguing your cones. So on the bottom there, if you remember, it was purple. And purple isn't a real color, which I'll talk about in a second, but it's a very long wavelength of light and a very short wavelength of light. And when you put those together uh, and it kind of, we stared at it for a long time, then we moved to a black and white slide, what weren't you staring at that was a middle wavelength of light like green so the green pops up so you can construct these things to fool our eyes and brains into seeing scenes that we see in everyday life again i've mentioned this in every lecture but color is three-dimensional and you need three dimensions of color to just adequately describe a color but as i mentioned earlier purple for instance is a non-spectral hue so i said earlier that a wavelength of light gets decoded by our eyes and brain into a color percept. But in this case, there's not even a wavelength that corresponds with purple. It's just a short wavelength like blue and a long wavelength like red. And we instantly, our brains and eyes instantly turn it into a color together like purple. So there's no actual wavelength associated with purple. And finally, another example of this relativity of color is that you can reach the exact same percept by totally different inputs. So you can take two colors that, like in this case, uh, yellow-orange and blue-green, or red and green, and arrive at the exact same color. So you're starting from two different points. You can actually create the same color. So these are called metamers, but basically it's just another example of how we have these kind of ideas that if you take red and green, it's going to always be kind of a red and green mix when actually you could take red and green paint and make a chromatic gray and then mix that same chromatic gray with blue and orange or yellow and violet or any other combination of complementary colors. It might be difficult, but color is relative and you can do it. Okay, so there's my dog and I'll see you next time.